Hello, thank you for joining us again on our YouTube channel. My name's Charlene and I'm the Assistant Manager here at the Frank Nutt Sewing Machine Shop in Birmingham. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Brother Innovis 1300 machine. Really great machine, sews very well, has lots of great features and some good accessories. So we'll go through the threading and some of the features and everything that it comes with in the box as well. So we have the machine all set up here. You can see really good lighting. It has an LED light by the needle as well as an LED light under the arm as well. Really big arm, 8.3 inches to the right of the needle. So you've got lots of space here for bigger projects or for quilting or anything really, anything that you need a bit more space for really good work area. This machine has 182 stitches, including buttonholes, the alphabet, and this differs from the lower model because you can actually do lowercase as well in the alphabet, which is, which is a nice feature. You also get a hard case in the box, so that can keep the machine nice and safe. The top closes down and you've also got a handle as well. So even though it is slightly bigger and slightly heavier, it is relatively portable and you can move it around the house or take it to classes. Um, and it's nice that the lid flips down so it keeps all the dust off these areas and just keeps it nice and tidy. We have all of the accessories set up here, nice and neatly on the bench. So first of all, you get a knee lift in the box, which I'll demonstrate for you shortly. And then you've got your feet as well. So you have the zipper foot, it's the standard zipper foot, um, a monogramming foot. This is your overcasting foot and a button sewing on foot. So that's for actually sewing buttons down onto material. And that's your blind hemming foot there as well. Really useful foot to have in your accessory box. And this is your button hole foot. So you can see we've got a button in the back here. So I'll show you how that works. It works in one step and is really simple and easy to get consistent buttonholes. You've got a twin needle in the box as well as some additional needles and lots of tools for removing various different screws, whether it's on the needle plate or um, the actual needle itself. A few different sizes of spool caps, depending on what size thread you're using, and an eyelet punch tool, and a spool net, and also a little brush for keeping the machine defluffed. All of the feet actually fit into this really tidy case, and they've all got um, letters on them so you know what foot belongs in, in which part and that actually fits just here in the accessory compartment which flips down really easily and that just slots in nice and simply and just close that and it's nice and neat. There is another accessory compartment at the back you might not be able to see it very well on camera but um, there is an additional flip down at the back for extra bits and pieces so you can keep them nice and tidy. You've also got your foot control, so even though this machine has a start-stop button, you can interchange between the foot control and start button, uh, power lead, um, your manual at the back here as well. Um, it's nice to have a paper manual to be able to flip through, um, an additional spool pin, and a little accessory bag for keeping all your extra bits and bobs in. So what we'll do now is go through the threading of the machine and how you wind a bobbin as well. It's really, really simple and we'll show you that really excellent needle threader as well. So now we'll actually thread up the machine and wind on a bobbin and show you how to use the needle threader. So we have our thread on the horizontal spool pin and I've used one of the smaller spool caps because it's appropriate for the size of the thread. And we just want to follow the dotted line to wind on a bobbin and then it will be the solid line for threading the machine. Brother have made it nice and easy to follow the guides for threading. So we're just going around to number two and then we're coming across to this tension disc here and we just want to make sure the thread is 
in the tension disc so you can feel the tension on the thread and there is a diagram at the top as well just to show you exactly where the thread needs to go. Then we'll bring the thread across to the bobbin and you want to wind it on maybe about four times to make sure that it actually spins and winds on. And then there is a thread cutter just here on the bobbin winder. And then we just flick it across. Again, you have a picture and a diagram here just to show you what to do next. And then the actual button will turn orange, which means it's ready to wind on a bobbin. And the screen's telling us that it's winding a bobbin. And we can turn it up a little bit using the speed control. There we are, that should be enough. So we just press the same button again to stop and then flick it back across and take the bobbin off and we can use the thread cutter again just to trim the bobbin. So to put the bobbin into the bobbin area it has a bobbin cover and there's a small lever that we just pull across and it will release the bobbin cover and we can take it off. Then we just want to drop the bobbin in and there is a diagram here to show you which way the bobbin thread needs to go. So that should help you make sure the bobbin's always in the right way. And we're just following the arrows and there is a thread cutter just on the end and we just trim the thread. Then we can just put the bobbin cover back on and there we are. We're all done, so that's the bobbin complete. And then we will follow the numbers and the arrows for threading the needle. So we'll just make sure that we're not in a tangle in any way because we don't want it to affect the stitching. So we're following the numbers, number one, and then around and back down at number three. Then we come back up to the take-up link and we just want to follow the arrow and you'll feel it just sort of fall into place in the take-up link. You can't really see the take-up link very well, but you'll feel that it's in place. And then we just want to hook it at number six behind the needle bar. And then we've got our lovely needle threader. So we're just following the diagram and the numbers to number seven. It clips into a tension disc and then we just want to trim the thread on the side and using a lever which is here on the left hand side we bring the needle threader all the way down and there we have it. So it's threaded the needle, very easy to use needle threader, it's called an advanced needle threader that we're always super impressed with and it's very simple to use. So what we'll do now is go through some of the features as well as sew the machine so you can actually see it in action. So now I'll actually just show you how to get to the different stitches and we'll actually run the machine so you can actually see it in action. So one of the first things I'll show you is the knee lift. This is a really, really useful tool that not, not everyone knows what actually does. So it plugs into the machine and then using your knee, you push it to one side and it will actually drop the foot. So I'll do that again so you can see. So using my knee, I'm using the lever and hands-free, it's lifting the foot and putting the foot back down. So that's really useful if you want to turn corners, whether you're dressmaking or quilting, it's a really useful tool. So we'll lift it again, hands free, just to reposition the fabric and pop it down. Very electronic on this machine as well, that particular knee lift. So we'll just select a stitch um, and get it sewing so you can see it in action. So you've got different modes on the top and you just want to cross-reference the modes with the keypad. So we'll select mode one, and we just have to type in the number of the stitch that we want to try. So we'll just do a normal zigzag. So that's number 10. And it's set the width and it's set the length. And on this machine, it is actually full, fully automatic, the tension is. So it's actually on screen as opposed to the traditional dial. And you can adjust it using the pluses and minuses. You can also set the machine to cut and tie off at the end automatically, as opposed to you having to do that yourself using the buttons. You can actually set it to do that. Okay, so using the start button, 
um, big green button, which means go, and we'll just press start. And we can adjust the speed as well. So it's really smooth machine to use. Stop. So it stopped with the needle down, and then using the knee lift, we can actually lift the foot hands free and pivot the fabric and drop the foot again, and then press start. And again, lift the foot and pivot the fabric. So we'll select another stitch and we'll just cross reference the stitch card with the actual keypad as well. So there's a small little leaf motif up here and we just want to press it however many times to correspond to the different modes. So on the actual keypad, we'll actually press, okay. So we'll just press it one, two, three. So we're in mode three and then we'll select a stitch. So let's just go for 14. And again, it's set the width, it's set the length, and it's also set the tension for this particular stitch. So you should get perfect stitches every time. And then we'll just come back across to the start button. And off it goes. And then if we press the pattern end button, What it's done is done a tying off function and we'll lift the foot and it's also cut the thread as well. So pressing that pattern end button has allowed us to finish the seam because we press the automatic setting or you can also just do it yourself using these buttons. So you've got back stitch, tying off and that's your thread cutter and needle up and down. So it's all very electronic this machine, lots of lovely features uh, for efficient and easy sewing. What we've also got is the one step buttonhole. So really useful tool. And all you have to do is pop your button in the back of the foot. So you could have small buttons or big buttons. And we just need to secure it into place. To change the foot, we just, there's a small lever at the back that you press and the foot will come off. So that's a snap on and off foot. So that's your normal zigzag foot. So we'll put that to one side. And then we just need to maneuver the foot underneath the shank and it will just clip into place. So another important thing with buttonholes is to make sure that the buttonhole lever is down. So it's a grey lever on the left hand side and you just need to make sure that that is pulled down for buttonholes. It just disappears up into the machine but that's really important that that is in place to do buttonholes. And we just need to select a buttonhole. So we'll go back to the first mode, which is on the keypad and press OK. And you've got 10 different styles of buttonholes to choose from, lots of different shapes and sizes, as well as stretch buttonholes, so that's great. So we'll just pick number 77. There we are, and we've got the correct foot on. So now what we'll do is actually position the buttonhole foot and it's going to move backwards, so you want to make sure that you've marked your fabric correctly. And all we have to do is press the start button and it will create a buttonhole the exact size of the button that is in the back of the foot. It just means that you can get really consistent buttonholes very easily without much hassle. And we can turn it up a little bit using the speed control. it's going to stop when it's completed the entire buttonhole and just make sure that thread is cut and then we'll lift the foot and there we are. So we've just got two, we just need to trim that thread there, but we've got two identical buttonholes um, for the button that was in the back of the buttonhole foot. Really simple, really easy and stitches really well. So now that we've actually run the machine and you've seen it sewing, I'll just show you some of the additional extra features you can do with the Brother Innoviz 1300. So I've done a couple of samples 
and one of the extra features that you have is you can actually do a single design so what that means is using the the button over here you can see we've got the love hearts on the screen but if we select a single design you can see it just changes to to one individual motif or heart and you can see it allows you to just sew one at a time so you might just want to do that for decorative reasons on, on a project but that's something you can do what the 1300 has over the lower model which is the 1100 is multi-directional sewing so what that means is is that the, some of the designs are actually quite a bit bigger than the seven millimeters um, that the width is because the machine actually sews multi-directionally you can also combine stitches so here you can see we've done a couple of stars and then written Frank's name and a couple of stars on the end as well so the combination button is actually just here so it would allow you to then add in say 09 so we've got a love heart and a star and then we could also add in another design just 02 so you can see you can actually combine different stitches whether it's decorative or the alphabet so that's the combination function um, on the 1300 You've also got a mirror image function, which I haven't done a sample for, but it basically just means that you can flip a design from one way to another. And if you're doing a border or need it to be the opposite way, that's a useful tool. So it's this one here with the two triangles facing the opposite way. What I'll do is actually show you how the sideways stitching works. So I'll just grab some material and we'll pop the foot down. So we just need to get into the right mode. So we'll just select on the keypad. And up here on the stitch card, you can actually see you've got number 92, 93, 94. And you can actually see there's got arrows going in different directions. So what we'll do is select number 92. And we'll use, move the fabric down a little bit using the start button it's actually going backwards without me using the back stitch and then we'll use our knee lift and actually lift the foot with the needle down and turn the fabric and then we'll select number 95 and press start and it's just coming forward and then we'll stop Again, using the knee lift, turn the fabric. So what I'm doing is an actual box, an entire box. So we can use 95 again because it's just coming forward. Then we can stop. And then if we select number 93 and press start, the machine is actually moving across to the left. Just use our scissor button and lift the foot. And I've actually gone around and created a box. It's not the neatest of box, but you kind of get the idea. So the machine will actually move from side to side. And those particular stitches, you can do straight stitch or zigzag. What it also means is that some of the decorative stitches, not all of them, but a good chunk of them, you can select and they'll actually do them much, much bigger. So if we go into mode one and select number 18 and then press start. It's actually moving to the side, left to right, to allow for the designs to actually be much bigger, much bolder. It's not limited by the seven millimeter stitch width. So that's something that's, that's unique to the 1300. And again, what we can do is press our pattern end button, which is the button with the circle on. So if we press that, what it will do is complete an entire design and then finish so that you don't end up finishing halfway through a design. And if 
we just lift the foot you can see these designs are really big really bold because the multi-directional sewing has meant that it cre could create a nice chunky design so that's really really lovely it would be lovely on lots of different projects so that's just some of the features on the 1300 i hope you found this video fairly informative you can see that there's there's loads to this machine and it can do so much and you'd be able to take on all sorts of different sewing projects. So don't forget to subscribe if you like our videos and give us a thumbs up again if you think this video was really useful and informative and if you've got any questions anytime do call our shop we'd be more than happy to help. So I'll see you in the next video.